Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, an epic 54,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos I've released in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you watch at least the unboxing video just to know the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle. Now today we're going to start the before last bag. It's bag 26, which ends up being section 9. Two big, bold, beautiful, more modern paintings in this section. Love it. And at first I was worried there was a lot of beige background pieces, but they're actually quite colorful and ornate. It reminds me of the background for the section that had the Mona Lisa in it. Oh, I can't wait. This could end up being one of my favorite sections in the entire jigsaw puzzle, if not the favorite section of mine in the entire puzzle. If we pull out our panoramic poster of the entire jigsaw puzzle, that's it. This is the upper corner right over here. And once we've done this section, we just have this one over here to do, and that's it, we're done. And I tried to take my time with the last section and to go slow, I did it over a few days, but it still only took me less than 11 hours. Now this section, I was worried might take me a bit longer. I actually think the reds will be trickier, maybe more than the background. We'll have to wait and see. Now with all the other videos that I've done in this series, I'll do a voiceover. We'll talk about the paintings and the artists. Feel free to mute me. Feel free to skip ahead if you want. But I hope that you have been enjoying the voiceovers. I've enjoyed them so much in learning about the artists and the art and terms and art history. It's just been such a, such a joy. So there you go. I can't believe it. This bag and one more to go and then the suitcase is empty. So without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's get to work on bag 26, which is section nine, as we travel around art. There are two big, beautiful and colorful paintings in this section of the puzzle. The first is called La Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower by French artist Robert Delaunay, who, with his wife, Sonia, and others, co-founded the Orphism art movement, noted for its use of strong colors and geometric shapes. We saw another painting of his in this jigsaw puzzle in an earlier video, Rhythme, Joie de Vivre, Rhythm, Joy of Life. It was from section four, and I remember really, really enjoying it. Now back to this painting, he actually painted and drew a series of Eiffel Tower works. The first set consisted of nine pieces completed from 1909 to 1912. And then he returned to the theme again in the 1920s. He did a further six pieces, which are quite different from some of the earlier ones. The Eiffel Tower depicted in this jigsaw puzzle is from the later works, and it was painted in 1926. It's approximately 86 by 169 centimeters in dimension, so quite tall. And it is currently at the Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris in Paris, France. The entire series is considered the most prominent art depicting the iconic Paris Tower. This Eiffel Tower series is evoked in architectural paintings of other iconic buildings. For example, the Canadian artist Greg Coulneau did a series of the CN Tower from the 1970s and 1980s. One of the Eiffel Tower paintings from 1911 was featured in the 1980 BBC series 100 Great Paintings. I believe it came in at around number 45. I wasn't able to determine exactly which one of his paintings it was though because I believe there were three painted over that time period. The second painting in this section of the puzzle is by an artist we have not seen yet in this jigsaw puzzle and whose name I cannot properly pronounce no matter how many times I've listened to it, but I'll do my best. Alexis von Jolensky. He was a Russian expressionist painter active in Germany. He was also a key member of the New Munich Artists Association, the Blue Rider Group, and later the Blue Four. The painting is titled Young Girl with a Flowered Hat and it's from 1910. 
It is currently at the Albertina Museum in Vienna, Austria. I wasn't actually able to find dimensions for it. Although he started painting while in Russia, the artist became famous when he moved to Germany, where he stayed active throughout his career in life. He was more associated with the German artists than the Russian group. He was famous for his brand of expressionism, characterized by rich and lush colors comparable to Matisse's Fauvism. An example of this rich colored expressionist artwork is this painting, Young Girl with a Flowered Hat. It's a portrait of a girl wearing a flowered hat and holding a fan. The background, the dress, and the hat are done in the same hue of red. Influence of the Japonisme movement is also apparent in this painting. Japonisme is a French term that refers to the popularity and influence of Japanese art and design among a number of Western European artists in the 19th century. What a big, beautiful, bold section. So colorful. I loved both of these paintings. It was so much fun to do. In fact, it only took me 11 hours and 24 minutes. I thought it would take a lot longer because of the background pieces. But to tell you the truth, because there was so much detail in the background, and, and I know it doesn't perfectly come across on camera, you really need to see this in person to fully appreciate it. But I would say I had maybe a hundred like really just beige pieces at the end to deal with. The rest had that lovely detail. So I have a question for you. I personally think that I would have liked a lot more of that background detail throughout the entire jigsaw puzzle. I don't think it would have detracted too much from the paintings because the paintings have, you know, the frames around them that separate them from the background. So what do you think? Would you have enjoyed more detail in the background or do you prefer the beige just to let the painting stand out more? One bag to go. One bag, 52,000 pieces done, 2,000 pieces remaining, that's it. What am I gonna do? Well, as I've mentioned before, I have two projects lined up, a smaller one and a much larger one. And if you follow my posts on my YouTube community tab, you may have some ideas as what's coming down the pipeline. So I'd like to know what you think I have planned for my smaller project and for my bigger project. Leave your comments below. I won't reveal if you're right or wrong, but you're gonna find out soon enough. Now, the smaller project I do have on hand and I'll be starting that soonish soonish and um because i'm still trying to get some speed puzzling practice in here and there um but the bigger project i mean i gotta stop trying to update the tracking like every minute of every day the last i know it's in a shipping container in auckland so it's made it to new zealand i really don't expect it to be delivered before 
you know, the holidays or the new year, just because I know they're really, really busy, but at least it's in country. So that's, that's something that's exciting. And so fingers crossed, nothing happens between Auckland and down here to Dunedin and it makes it safe and sound. And we'll look forward to that hopefully in the new year. As soon as it arrives though, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I won't keep you in further suspense. I'll let you know as soon as it arrives, but it's not here yet. Oh, but still, I mean, I've loved this so much and I've appreciated so much everyone who's watched these videos, commented, told me how much they appreciate the effort I put into the voiceovers and the research. But again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!